Hey everyone, uh, it's it's good to see you. Uh, let's just go ahead and get uh, get Adam Masarian here for our, our live chat this morning. All right, let's see. Um, hold on. All right. I think we're getting Adam in a second. It works. It worked. There you are. I was worried if it didn't work, I was gonna get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's tough. It's tough when you're when you're running Instagram and if if if, if the live thing doesn't work. But no, we're we're uh we're in business here. How how are you? I'm not too shabby. How you doing? You know, I mean it's been a it's been a pretty interesting and difficult year and it continues to be, but um but you know, I mean I'm 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 excited about a lot of the stuff that we're building. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're doing on Instagram, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that. How's the family? Family's good. Um, uh, the, I mean, look, the boys are nuts. We've got three of them, which is a lot, turns out. Um, but, uh, I don't know. The little one's the easy one, which is surprising. How are the girls? They're good. They're good. We got to get the kids together again sometime. I know. Our, um, especially Augie, my, uh, my youngest really, really has a thing for, um, you know, she, I think she, she and the Masseri boy clan, um, get together, get, get along pretty well. It's pretty fun to, to see them together. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the Masseri boys have a thing for Augie. She's, she, like, they don't listen to anything I say ever. And, and when we hang out with Augie, Augie just directs them. Like she's like the conductor of the entire, you know, orchestra. I can't, I don't know how to begin to wrap my head around what's going on. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, she she's got a charisma. I'm not sure where she got that from. Um, <laughs> it's not 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 me. Um, but um, yeah, well, you know, hopefully hopefully soon we'll be able to 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 get everyone together and hang out more. But it's it's good to see you guys doing doing so well. So um, yeah. So uh, we got a lot of stuff going on. Where where do you, where do you want to start today? I don't know, but we got good people in the comments here. I see Tank, one of my favorite memers. Going yeah, on. I mean, he's, he's the best. Yeah, Tank's the best. Uh, Fiji um, runs the Facebook app, a bunch of people showing up, so it's always good. Yeah, I mean, look, I thought it'd be good to talk about creators today. There's just a lot going on. You've been talking about them a lot more recently, um, but we've been working and doing work for creators at Facebook and at Instagram for years now. Um, so I thought it'd be fun just to chat about what's coming up. Um, who, are you, Before we jump into who are some of your favorites? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it depends on what category you're talking about. I mean, probably, you know, one of the, I, I follow a lot of, of surfers and, and foilers. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty into the, the sport. So, you know, people like Kyle Lenny and, you know, Lucas Chumbo, um, you know, I mean, it's, it, are, are, are obviously, you know, awesome at this. Um, you know, I, th I think Kai is, is, um, you know, he's like magical on, on a foil and, and seeing all the stuff that he does. I mean, it's it sort of helped me get into the sport, just watching him you know, foil down a huge wave, then turn around, pump, go back upwind, um, up the wave, do a flip off the wave. It's like, oh my God. I mean, it's, it's like unreal. Um, the stuff that he and, and, and the people who, who are, who are, who are doing that kind of stuff do. And, and, you, you know, I mean, once I had a chance to talk to him about, you know, how important Instagram and, and social media overall were to, um, to him and his business. And it was really cool to, to hear because, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, if you're, if you're in, in surfing, um, you know, I mean, you can win prizes in competitions, but that's not you know, massive um, in, in terms of economically. A lot of it is about, is about basically the, the sponsorships and the deals and, you know, being able to represent the awesome stuff that they're doing online. Um, you know, it's, it, they, they really are um, sort of creators in a, in a, in a, of, a, of a different type in terms of the, um, you know, art and extreme stuff that they get to do and, and, and can pull off. And it's, it's just, I don't know, I just find it super inspiring. Um, I think it's cool to watch, you know, when I'm not in a place where I can be in the water, when I can be in the water, then that's awesome, but I don't look anything like that. Um, but, uh, but, but I don't know, it's, it's um, they're, they're pretty impressive. Yeah. Tank says you gave them, Tank, the creator, uh, Tank Sinatra, the creator, uh, gave you, you gave them mean gold when he went foiling. So he wanted to say thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I have to say, um, you know, yeah, that, that, that uh, photo of me foiling where I put on way too much sunscreen. Zink I mean, it's just like... It was like 80s. It was so strong. It was so strong. Well, it's actually, it's even more extreme than that. I, I, I had sunscreen on. I mean, when, when you know, I'm, I'm a pretty pale person. So, I mean, if I'm, if I'm out in, in, 
in Hawaii, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty strong there and I'm going to get burnt and I don't want to, want to, you know, stay healthy. So, so I do it. But in that particular case, I, um, you know, I was just kind of foiling around and, um, and then, you know, I, I noticed that there was this paparazzi guy following us. So I was like, oh, I don't want him to, to recognize me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to put a ton of sunscreen on my face and then you won't know who I am. But that, um, that, that backfired. Um, that, that really, I really should have thought that went through more. So, so instead, you know, he, he took these photos and it's like, what is this guy doing? And it's like, yeah, no, that's fair. That's just, that is way too much sunscreen. Um, no, no one needs to be wearing that much sunscreen. But, um, but there is always, of course, this difference when you're, when, you know, you're in the water, you're doing some kind of extreme sport, you know, the delta between like how cool you think you look and like, and, and kind of the, the worst photo that, a, that, that kind of a paparazzi or someone can, can take is, um, is, is pretty funny. But I think it's, you know, you just want to have a sense of humor about this stuff. It's all good. I'm glad people can laugh about it. I, I, I laugh about it. I think it's pretty funny. I was running away from the alarm. There's some this alarm on the street was going off. Yeah, here. I heard. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm glad you can laugh about it. I'm not sure I'd be as big a man as it, as you have, as you have been. Um, uh, looks like Adam, the creator, is enjoying that too. I'm seeing him in the comments. I mean, it's all good. I like. I mean, look, there's been a lot worse about me. So I'm, uh, you know, it's uh, if if there's if someone wants to post about a sunscreen meme, I'm I'm cool. I'm cool. Okay. We can ha happy to happy to give the internet some laughs for that. All right, everybody on the comments, if you got questions, please ask them either in the poll or in the comments. We'll try to grab them. It looks like a lot of people, it's happening so fast, it's hard. Um, before we jump in, though, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is just how important I think it is that we focus on helping creators make a living over the yeah. long run. Uh, so we've talked a bit, I mean, you talked a bit more about the audio stuff on the Facebook app um, a couple of weeks ago, but what are you most excited about um, upcoming in terms of helping creators make a living? Yeah, so first to take a step back, I think the vision of the world that we're going for, I think in almost any positive vision for the future, um, you know, a lot more people are getting to engage in kind of creative uh, work rather than just jobs that they find monotonous, right? So I think that that's, you wanna give people the tools to do that both to just as a hobby express themselves, but ideally you wanna make it so that that can be a job for millions of people, right? And you and I have talked about this, how. You know, our goal for, um, you know, across the whole company is to be able to support millions of people having a job um, doing doing creative work. And in order to do that, there's just a bunch of different streams of, of stuff that you need to do. And, you know, you, you've, you've walked through a lot of the stuff. I mean, a bunch of it is creative tools, right? So that way you can you can just create great stuff across all these different mediums, video, audio, um, text, photos. Um, you know, just emerging media, games, stuff like that. Um, then you, you, of course, want to make it so that you can connect um, with your community and grow your community. And, and that's, you know, a big part of social media and something that we've historically done. But, you know, one of the bigger pieces that I think still really needs to get built out, and it feels like we're at this inflection point now, is, um, is around monetization. Because if, if there's going to be people's job, they need to be able to make money doing it. And, you know, there are lots of different models around this. Um, and I, I think a lot of different people are going to mix and match different things. Um, and it's, it's not going to be one size fits all. And I think a lot of creators aren't just going to do one piece. Um, but subscriptions are going to be a big piece of it. You know, we, we have tools like tipping and stars, which we've rolled out on Facebook. And I think we're going to want to, you know, expand across the other apps at some point. Um, you know, obviously there are, there are areas like, um, like in the video work where there's, where there's um, some kind of revenue share on, on, on kind of advertising where, where, where creators can get a cut of, of that. Um, but, you know, increasingly, I think some of the areas that we're focused on, and, and this is like the new stuff that, that we wanted to talk through today, is around um, how creators can plug into commerce, right? And, 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 and basically help um, with the kind of sponsorships that they do across different apps. So, you know, the, the three things... Um, you know, that we've recently done a lot of work on, right? And, and that you're, you know, uh, and you obviously can, can jump in and add whatever detail you want on this, because a lot of this is work that, that your teams are doing. But um, the three new projects that I know we haven't really talked about uh, publicly to date, but I think are going to be a big part of this vision. One is creator shops and creator commerce, right? Yeah. So we, we've done a bunch of work around commerce. So, you know, businesses, small businesses can set up shops and Instagram on Facebook um, can sell stuff online, right? And 
you know, that's been especially important in the last year. A lot of physical stores have, have had to close during the lockdowns, but, you know, online stays open. It can be a more personalized and convenient experience, and that's awesome. And, of course, we see a lot of creators setting up shops, too. Um, and one part of being a, a, of kind of a creator business model is, you know, you create great content and then you, you can, you can sell stuff. And so having, having creator shops is, is, is awesome. Um, and, and I think it's something that is just going to be really exciting. A second part that's really connected to that is around, um, basically affiliates. So, you know, creators can build up, um, an audience of people who, follow um, and are interested in their content. Um, but whether they're selling their own stuff or someone else's, you know, people look to creators for recommendations about what's good, especially in the spaces that they're, you know, the experts on they're creating around, right? So you know, going back to what we were talking about before, you know, if Kai Lenny is on a KT foil, then like when I, the next time I'm like trying to, you know, consider what kind of board I'm, I'm going to get, you know, you, you know, I'm at least going to go to the KT website or, or try to check out some of their stuff. Um, even though I, I have to say I'm more of a Lyft guy my, my, myself, um, but um, so, so shout out to, to the Lyft Foils team who I think just does um, incredible work on that. Um, but, you know, I, ideally you'd have, you know, whether it's Kai or different kinds of creators, um, I, I think should be able to get a cut of the of the sales of things that they're recommending. And we should, you know, build up an affiliate and, and kind of recommendation marketplace to enable that to all happen. So that's the second piece that we're working on that I think is going to be quite exciting. And then the third piece, which I think ties to this as well, is um, is basically a marketplace for matching up creators with uh, branded content, right? So you know the other way that 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 these folks build uh, that that people can build a, a business is you know they do awesome stuff and then um, and, and then people want to sponsor them. But you know right now we're not offering tools for that to happen um for, for that kind of matching to take place so you know we're, we're we're building those kind of tools up um and uh and 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 that i think is going to be a really exciting thing and you know we're gonna we're gonna build that out and it's gonna have very favorable terms to creators so you know we're not building this from the perspective of us trying to make a lot of money our view is that you know if we help creators make more money on their content that'll help a broader creator economy emerge, which will make it so that there's more content across the services, more ways to connect, and that'll be awesome. But those three things, I mean, it's creator shops, you know, affiliate uh, marketplace, so creators can, can um, you know, get a cut of the things that they're recommending, that they're really creating value um, and helping to sell. Um, and and then the, the, the third one around uh, branded content marketplace. So all exciting stuff. I mean, I don't know if you want to jump in and add anything on those, but I mean, those are three big areas that, that um, you know, that we've been working on. Yeah, no, I mean, I love all of that. On the on the last one about helping brands and creators connect, I just, I'm personally really excited because it feels like we should be able to help brands find creators that are uniquely aligned with what they're, what they're trying to do and vice versa. And branded content is, you know, the economic engine behind the creator ecosystem in a lot of ways, but it doesn't work unless it really feels right, unless you're really excited about who you're working with. And so I just think matchmaking there is something that we can add a lot of value for. I think Kai's in the comments, man. I just saw him show up. Let's see yeah, there's I... a lot of comments. I, I it's it's scrolling by so quickly. I'm I'm kind of having a hard time. But um... Kai just, Kai's here though. Kai just said you. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Well, well, hey, how's it going? I'm glad you could stop by. <laughs> oh my god! It's uh, you have you surfed with him? Um. I mean, I don't think you can really call what I doing what what I do uh, surfing with Kai. I think I, I've 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 sometimes been um, in the same place with him while he does what he does, and and I just try to stay on the foil. Um, but um, but no, actually, Kai was the first person who you know I, I like I, I used to play around with these e foils, which were are, are, are pretty fun, um, but. You know, Kai was the first person who's like, look, you got to get a real foil. And, and that, that just like, I think that like changed my life. I mean, that it's just so much fun. It's, it's a, it's a workout. Um, you know, pumping it is, is, is awesome. Um, it's a lot lighter. It's like, you can, you can catch waves and swells a lot more easily. So um, no, yeah. Kai, Kai has a big personal, personal influence. On I, mean, that. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I would ever try surfing in the same vicinity <laughs> as Kai. All right, we're getting some questions. We should jump to questions here. Tank Sinatra is asking, um, Instagram will be connecting brands and creators, basically, acting as an agency. Maybe I can grab this one. Um, yeah, go for it. 
Yeah, so we're still working on it. But right now, this kind of just all goes down in the DMs. Like, people, creators just get messaged by brands. Sometimes all that happens off-platform. Deals happen. I worry some people are getting overpaid. Some people are getting underpaid. We just want to help facilitate that in, in a responsible way. So you can imagine being an, a brand and having and saying, like, look, this is what I want. I want to reach 20-year-olds, you know, you know, women in this country, or I want to just, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever they're trying to get done. And then they could tell us, and then we could be like, all right, here's like 50 creators that you should talk to. And then, yeah, you can facilitate and we can make it easier to connect, et cetera. And then from the creator side, we would love to help creators vet brands. You know, I don't know how that would work. There's a bunch of ways we could do that, but, um, you know, you can get, there's, there's some bad companies out there and you can get ripped off, um, but there's some great ones too. And so anything we can do to help you vet brands, find brands that are looking for creators, but that also resonate with what you care about, because we know you don't want to rep something that you don't love. Um, I think there's tools on both sides. So we want to do a lot on both sides. Um, Taylor Lorenz is in here. Here she is. What is Instagram doing to create more transparency to branded content ecosystem? Do you want to take this or do you want me to take this one? Um, I mean, go for it. I mean, I think that the marketplace that we're gonna that we're gonna build is gonna be quite helpful on this. I mean, right now, I think one of what we're one of the things that we're seeing is that it's just, um, you know, it's 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 pretty opaque. I think both for how creators should engage in it, and um, if a creator makes a deal um, to do something, what the transparency is around that um, to consumers and people using Instagram. So, um, part of the benefit of building a, a marketplace around this is just to kind of bring a little bit more order to the space. Um, and by creating a little more of a standard, we think that we'll, we'll be able to make it so that both it's more accessible for creators that they can make more money um, and, it's, and it's easier to engage in. Um, but also uh, part, of the, part of the benefit of that is going to you know, make it so that there, there can be a little more clarity for, for, um, for the people using the products. And I think that, that could be helpful too. Yeah, I think transparency all the way around, right? I think people need to know when they're seeing branded content Brands need to know the, their return on their investment um, and creators need to know, you know, who it's resonating with and who it's not. So the more we can, here's a good one though. Adam, the creator. Yeah, can I, I saw this. you a new board with the sunblock meme on it. All right. If you do that, I will use it and I will send you a photo and, and, and you can kind of have exclusive rights to, to posting that. So, um. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. I love that. Um, man, they're going by really fast. It's hard. Um, yeah. Uh, here's one that I can take. What do your rules apply to some people but not others? And can people buy their way out of rules? No. Uh, we have community guidelines and community standards. What is allowed to be on the platform and not? We try to be um, as permissive as we can because we think it's important for people to be able to express themselves. Um, but when it comes to safety issues, we draw a line, uh, and you can't buy your way out of that. Um, sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes. We take something down we shouldn't. Sometimes we should take down something and we miss it. Mark has been, I think, as hard on um, or has pushed as hard as anybody else in the, in the company at making sure we make less mistakes over time. Um, but I do want to be honest that, you know, we do. But we are getting, I think, a lot better. Um, but no, you can't buy your way out of a problem. Yeah. Hey, Adam, one question that I think would be interesting to, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of interested to hear you talk about this too, is... Uh, you know, this has come up over the last several days since you know I did this Discord chat with um, with Casey Newton, um, and, and there's been a bunch of talk about you know how do we help create a, a creator middle class instead of just all of the um, just a, a big head basically of of kind of the 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 most successful creators getting to be huge. Um, th th I think this is a really important topic because again, I mean, our goal that that you and I have discussed a lot is is being able to support millions of jobs for creators doing this kind of work and you don't do that if it's just a few people so um yeah. you know, i'm curious to hear how you think we should do this just like we we support small businesses you know primarily more than you know big companies and and building their businesses on on, on facebook and our different apps um you know what are the different things that you think are going to be important to doing that um with creators yeah it's a really good question i think historically instagram specifically has done better creating value for creators who are already established and we haven't um, done as well with aspiring and experimenting creators. People are trying to just get started. I think that's a big miss on our part. Um, we're trying to really pivot towards that. Um, so most all of our work on creators is focused on 
um, the small creators who are, you know, the next generation of the creators, I think that people who think are going to push culture into the future. Um, I think the Facebook app team who we've been working with really closely is doing the same. I think the question is like, how do we make sure we build for them, right? And so, you know, like for instance, the branded content marketplace is a good example. Currently, because there's no measurement on the ad side, just to get a little businessy for a second, brands tend to go with big creators they know, but they probably overpay them and they probably underpay and don't often work enough with the smaller creators. So if we can help match make, we can help, you know, drive some more, in this case, money, dollars to to the smaller creators who I think can do amazing work for brands. Um, so we're trying to find more areas like that where we can actively build with small creators in mind first. Another good example is ranking, right? Reels is the first part of Instagram that is proactively trying to find new talent and help it break. Whereas historically, we just kind of go with whatever's got a lot of engagement um, or who already is established. Um, and so, and I want to bring what we're doing in Reels to the rest of Instagram. So you just have to understand their needs directly and build for them directly. And I think we have got to do that across the whole family. Yeah. And I think the, the affiliate uh, piece will be very helpful for this too, because yeah. you know, a lot of time, if you're an emerging creator, just like if you're a small business, um, you know, it's not like you, you, you don't maybe start out with as big or established of a brand that the big companies are, are kind of going out of their way to associate with. But, um, but by showing that you can, you know, the loyalty that people have to you, right. That, that they, um, you know, that your followers, uh, follow your recommendations and, and that, um, and, and that you can help drive sales. I mean, that's ultimately going to be the type of thing that, um, that larger companies uh, want to associate with. So I think through the affiliate, program that we're talking about building up in the marketplace there or on commerce, I think that that will also give signal um, for who are going to be the people who, who brands should want to be associated more with. Um, and, and so in, in, in a way, these things kind of all connect to each other. Yeah. Uh, here's one um, different idea, but on connections. Are there plans to, to share reels to Facebook stories? Yeah. Um, we're yeah. trying to think about reels across Facebook and Instagram. Um, actually, we're currently testing um, a deep integration in the country of India, which has been going really well. Uh, so we, we want to make it so that no matter what app you use, you can connect with the reels or whatever content you find the most exciting or entertaining or valuable. Uh, so we're definitely trying to make that uh, as seamless as possible. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that the goal on this is is definitely, I mean, if you're a creator, we want to make it so that as easily as possible, you can get as much distribution as possible, right? So, and this is when I was, when I was talking about, you know, at a high level, there's creation tools, there's uh, basically distribution, getting your, your content out there, and then getting paid for it. I mean, those are three of the main pillars. And I think we'll want to, we'll want to innovate on all of them. And of course, making it so that you can have a, a presence across the different apps and be able to easily create something in one place and share it in a bunch and, you know, have that work together well, um, I think it's going to be really exciting. You know, one of the specific things that I think, you know, that, that you and I have talked about that I think will be, that'll feel really good and, and, and I think be an interesting indicator across the apps is we can get to some sort of like shared like count or, or engagement count across it or view count. Um, yeah. So now, you know, because I think some people look at that, especially for public content, as a signal for how popular or how good this thing is. And if you can get a sense, you know, both as the creator and your own analytics around, um, you know, how big these things, um, you know, how, how the different content that you're, that you're creating is doing, um, but then also individuals across the different platforms can have that shared sense. I think that that'll really be a useful signal and make that a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. And the more we can just make that transparent and easy, and then it's the creator's choice and they can just make it work for them based on whatever they want to do, I think the better. Um, yeah. It's hard to keep up with these comments. I haven't gone mm -hmm. live with you before. I'm glad you're on Instagram, by the way. I'm going to give you a little bit of grief and try to get you on here more. It's part of the family, part of the family. You know, um, I, I, use, I use Instagram every day and, and uh, probably even more in, in some cases than I use Facebook. But you know, I have to say, when I, when I post stuff and like, um, you know, if I, if I kind of coordinate posting things across both and everyone kind of gives me gives me grief for it's like ah oh, you're this is like too orchestrated but then if i just yeah. post and you know so um i don't know i guess that's that's win. kind of yeah but but, but yes yeah, so you're you're right I, I should i should be posting more stuff here happy to do a live here it's fun uh adam the creator wants to know what happened to the poke can we bring the poke back 
Um, I mean, the poke is, is awesome. I think that poke was like, in the very first, you know, I, I built the first version of Facebook in a couple of weeks um, you know, when I was in school. And there weren't many features. There were profiles. There wasn't newsfeed yet. So it's kind of hard to imagine you know, these kind of social apps without newsfeed. We didn't have that. We, we also, I didn't add messaging until like the second week it was live. Um, but we had poke from the beginning. And, um, and that was, I don't know, I always thought it was fun. But yeah, I, 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 think, it's, I think it's a good idea. Briefly, I feel like there was like a, no, what was that app called? Um, what was that? We made an app called Poke, didn't we? In like 2015? I don't even remember everything. Yeah, well, it was the good. first version. That I think that it was like the first version of, um, of stories that we made, right, of ephemeral oh, messaging. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, I mean, it was, you know, just it is kind of exploring that new format it was coming out. And yeah, I mean, it's, I think it is, it's, yeah, there, there's been a lot of fun to, to have around that. But, but I, I think that, yeah, it's a good idea. We should, we should, we should figure out how to do that. Nice. Yeah. I like, I mean, it was, it was, and this was college, right? There's only, this is when Facebook was just for college. It was part of, uh, it's like flirting, basically. It's just like a core part of like social interaction. Yeah. Um, are we thinking about an option to go live on both Facebook and Instagram? Yeah. We'd, we'd love to do that right now. Um, we are just making sure both run really, really well, um, and are built on the similar stack so that that's possible, but that's the kind of thing we want to be able to support long-term. Um, all right, we could do, well, how much time do we got? Maybe one or two more questions. We could also popcorn someone in if you're feeling like you want to take a risk here. Um, you never know what you're going to get. It looks like, yeah. Um, we'll do one more question. Ask a hard one. Group. <laughs> What's your favorite Instagram feature? That's not a hard one. That's for Mark though. Well, while, while I look for a hard, for a real question or you can buy some time for me here <laughs> i mean favorite feature um i mean i don't know i kind of I, I i like explore i mean i think it's a it's a pretty neat dynamic to to just like have instagram surface interesting stuff to you um you know we're kind of going in that direction with reels too i think that'll be quite good um yeah um <laughs> Here's a new one. I got a new one for you. We actually are um, building a video mute feature. Oh, yeah. There so, you go. There you go. So you can maybe, like, if your kid runs in or if the alarm on a car across the street goes off, you can mute your audio so that if I keep talking, you... okay, and then now I'm back again. So there we go. Although, yeah, the thing that I'm really excited about that is is by the time, I mean, as part of the audio tools that we're building, um, you know, some of the stuff that we're going to work on is, is, you know, trying to take audio, even if it's lower quality from a phone and, um, and, and basically upsample it to make it better. And, you know, I know that there's a bunch of teams and folks who are working on technology to segment kind of background noise from your voice and, and foreground. So hopefully in the future, you won't even have to mute on that, but we're not there yeah. yet for now we have mute which is yeah you know may, may not be it may not be the best feature of instagram but it, it it's certainly one of the newest features of instagram and it's not maybe from that it's perspective good. is uh is, is useful to, to talk about yeah i was thinking i'm just looking for a way to plug something coming out later this week i think um one of the things when you work here you know you you're always experimenting with the new tools before other people see them and you sometimes forgot um forget um, all right people. you, you want to bring you want to popcorn someone in yeah, let's pull in Tank because he's raising his hand here. Uh, but Tank, man, don't embarrass me in front of my boss, okay? <laughs> Just <laughs> we'll give you, we'll give you. Oh, this will be our last one. We'll do maybe we'll ask you a question and then we'll wrap up. Um, so I think you got to pull him in, Mark, because you're the host of this bad boy. Or uh, can let's I? Let's see. Uh, you should be able to. But let's see. I should, but it's, I'm having trouble with my Android. My team's gonna get upset about this. Right. Take a picture. I got you. Hi, hey. there he is. Is he very serious, or is he, or is well, he frozen? He's, it's a, it's a little of both. I'm, I'm gonna a, ruin this. Like a, I'm gonna ruin this whole thing. How's you it going? just got frozen, and you were just like a total like angry face. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it a pretty good resting face. This you know. is the this is better than being on Ellen. Yes, yeah. <laughs> way better. 
So Tank switched from memes to videos. Um, yeah. So this, he's, he's been an amazing Instagrammer for a long time now. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, oh, here you go. You get to ask me in front of my boss. Um, what Ooh. did your, what would, if you could change anything about Instagram, what would you change? Nothing, bro. You know that. I love Instagram. <laughs> With all my heart. <laughs> I gave you a layup. The window's closed. I'm not going to ask you again. I, I, I go back and forth. I, I mean, I was, I come from the era of the chronological feed, which I loved. You know what I mean? I, yeah. loved, the, I loved the chronological feed. It was probably three and a half years of just knowing exactly how something was going to perform within the first 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah. And um, you get lost now in the sauce. Like I've, you know, done stand up comedy. And when you are, trying to put together an act, which is basically what we're doing, trying to find out what works with our audience and what doesn't, it's hard to tell if your stuff is getting seen. You know what I mean? So I had DM'd you and you had a great um, idea about likes, turning them off or on, giving people the option, because I understand having likes on, if you are a sensitive person, which I can be, I would like the option to turn them off sometimes. Or like the restrict uh, feature is a great option. One of the best features in a long time that I've seen on Instagram, because I don't want to block people because I don't want to let them know that they've won. Plausible you know deniability. I mean? Yeah, Plausible exactly. Deniability. I, don't even, I don't even know you exist. I'm just going <laughs> to pretend this never happened. So to have the option for people to switch back from, from chronological to algorithmic feed, I think would be a nice option. But you guys, you know, I have faith that you guys are doing the best that you know how for the 1 billion people that use the app. I'm one of you know, many creators and we all talk, but my, my sample is limited. I talk to other creators and we all know what we want, but the, the majority of people that use the app are not on it eight hours a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I have to trust you guys, which don't let us down. You know yeah, yeah. I mean? it's yeah. Tough it's a tough one. Yeah. I can talk about Chrono or you can talk about it, Mark. It's up to you. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's there's obviously pros and cons with it, and and you know we, we want to make sure that people have the option to 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 use that. So, I mean, that's something that we that we think about. But you know, the the biggest problem is you know just like you were talking about how you don't want to block people, you want to restrict them. Um, the there's sort of a, a loss aversion that I think most people feel where you know if you go into chronological mode, you're sort of giving this incentive to a lot of um, accounts to just spam a lot, right? And to post a, a lot of content. And, and then you're kind of putting this decision on most people where they either have to decide, I'm going to unfollow this thing completely, um, or I'm going to deal with the fact that, that, uh, that I'm, I'm getting a higher volume of stuff. And, you know, people have the loss aversion that, um, that you're talking about where, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily want to, um, I guess the dynamic that you're talking about with plausible den deniability is different from loss aversion, but just like people don't want to go all the way to blocking someone all the time. Um, and a lot of time they don't want to unfollow someone because they feel like they might miss something that's good. So what we've found is that it ends up um, being a, a net worse experience, but, um, but there are certainly issues. I mean, I, I think the predictability uh, that you're talking about is, is certainly something that's really important. And, and, and look, I mean, if we're talking about helping to, um, you know, support a creator economy where millions of people can, can have jobs doing creative work, you know, part of supporting that is having the whole thing be a little more stable, right? It's like, you can't have it so that, you know, you're, you're, it's so spiky, you know, how, how things perform and, and, and the, the money that you're making. And, you know, obviously some content is going to be better than others. And you also want good things to be able to, to kind of perform better and, and, and make more money. But, um, but I do think just making sure that the system feels transparent and has enough stability is just going to be an incredibly important part of, um, of supporting the creator economy overall. Yeah. I just, I felt the chronological uh, timeline was a little bit more honest. It was a more honest, it was more honest feedback. So like there's, there's definitely pages out there that will post 30, 40 times a day and believe it or not, they're still dominating the timeline. So instead of seeing 30 posts, you're seeing eight, nine or 10. But if someone posts once or twice, you're seeing zero. You know what I mean? So they're still dominating the feed. It depends. I mean, if that's yeah. happening, that means that I'm not doing my job well on the ranking side. I think the thing, um, and then I know we're not going to agree on this because we've had this conversation before, but I think the key thing is what we found is that when we rank feed and we try to make the most of people's time by try, doing our best, and we make mistakes, but doing our best to show them what they're most interested in, they end up happier if we ask them, like, how, you, you know, how, like how, how satisfied are you with Instagram or with Facebook? But they also end up using Instagram 
on Facebook more, which then ends up helping creators overall get more engagement. Yeah. So it increases yeah, yeah. the overall pie. That's yeah. the tension. But it, look, I hear you. I hear you. It's more complicated. It means that things are less stable. Like Mark said, we have to like, if you're building a business, then like certainly stability is important. So um, never say never, but that's, that's, that's the thinking right now. There, there have also been times where I've posted, you know, something and it's, it tanked and I deleted it. And then another thing and it tanked, I deleted it. And then like the third or fourth thing I posted, it killed. And I'm like, oh, it wasn't the algorithm. You sucked for two hours. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> Well, I mean, time of day and all that stuff matters too. So it's not just it's not just the, the content. But um, all right, I got a question for you though. While while, while you're here, what, yeah. what's it going to take to to keep the memes coming though? Yeah. Which, which memes? Just Your you memes. know, keeping them coming. All of them. Yeah. Well. Well. No. You know, it's like, I mean, we were talking about how we're moving from from memes to video. I'm just like, I, I just want to want to make sure. As long as the world keeps turning, the memes will keep churning. <laughs> so there was a, a point in time, like 2015, I was making, I mean, it was crazy. I was making like 10, 15 memes a day. And I was like, there's no way I can keep this up. This is an, un, uh, 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 I cannot keep this pace up. And then I started to slow down. And then in year three, I started to like really slow down. I was making like three or four and I started to worry I was going to run out of content. And then I was like, you know what? as long as the world keeps staying the way it is, humor is oh, humor has been around since people could grunt. You know what I mean? People would point at something and be like, ah, eh. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it, it's humor is always going to be something that I think attracts people to whatever platform it is, whether it was books or newspapers, TV, radio, now it's Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. It's uh, I just started making reels because um I get I get indignant about my page sometimes. And when I feel like I'm losing control of my page and it doesn't belong to me anymore, I just shove my face in people's face. So that's what that was about. I just felt like people needed to know who I was or remember. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm Tank Sinatra. So if you don't like it, you need to unfollow me. So the <laughs> memes are coming back. You encourage people to unfollow you more than anybody else I follow, which I appreciate. What'd, what'd you say? <laughs> You encourage people to unfollow you more than anybody else I follow, which I appreciate, which I yeah, really if appreciate. If you're not having a good time here, there's so many other pages that you can go follow. You know what I mean? There, there's so many. And if you feel like you miss me after a while, you're welcome to come back at any time. So that's how I feel. I unfollow and refollow people all the time. Yeah, so do I. So yeah. do I. Thank you for this. Right, this was the, the highlight of my this life. This awesome. Thanks yeah, well, thanks me, for man. stopping by, and I, I, I love the content. So it's uh, I, I don't know how to get fair. out of here. So you guys, we're gonna, well, I think we're gonna wrap up the whole thing. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's, that's like a good my point. My mother in law, when she FaceTimes my kids, she's like, hang up on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think we're gonna wrap up overall, but but this is, this is good. All right, good seeing you. All right, All right. thanks Bye. for coming, Mark. Thanks for coming, Tank. All right, see you guys.